Hey, Super Cruisers, it's Frank and Kevin from Cruising with Wheels. And welcome to the first episode in our series of Rochester, New York, our hometown. I swear, we live in the best city in the country. Seriously, it's amazing the rich history that surrounds this city. So let's take a look at where we are and how we got here. And who were the people that put Rochester on the map? Now, Rochester, New York is a city located on one of the five Great Lakes, Lake Ontario, with a population of almost 1.1 million residents. And... Our founding father was Nathaniel Rochester. Now, the interesting fact about Nathaniel Rochester is that he was born in Virginia. He was a colonel in the American Revolutionary War and was a land speculator. He certainly was. Now, he was an early trucker taking wagon loads of goods up into New York State, where he located and bought the land that later became Rochester. And in 1811, he began the process of establishing a town of the Upper Falls Tract. He laid out streets and established plots of land for municipal, church, and business use. Now, later that year, he began to offer the plots for sale and named the would-be settlement, you guessed it, Rochesterville, <laughs> after himself with a population of 700. Now, in 1817, Nathaniel Rochester served on a committee to petition the state of New York to build what would become the Erie Canal on the proposed northern route that included a route across the Genesee River at Rochesterville. Yep, this would become a major manufacturing center, and soon after the Erie Canal mm -hmm. east to the Hudson River was opened, in 1825, the economy and population grew quickly. By 1830, the population reached 9,200, and the city became the original boom town, first known as, quote, the Young Lion of the West. <laughs> but it quickly, however, became known as the Flower City. Flour fit for royalty. The flour mills at High Falls produced flour of such high quality that Rochester flour was world-renowned. Now, the Erie Canal made Rochester renowned as well, and its flour was shipped out all over the world. Even European royalty desired Rochester flour. Today, the 96-foot-tall waterfall at High Falls is a centerpiece of Rochester's downtown, and the remnants of the flour mills can still be seen today. By 1850, the population reached 36,000, making it the 21st largest city mm -hmm. in the United States at the time. So, how did we go from the flower city, as in bread, to the flower city, as in lilacs? Well, famous horticulturists George Alwanger and Patrick Berry gained international attention for their nursery businesses here in Rochester, New York. Now, today, visitors enjoy beautiful parks and gardens all throughout the city and region, including over 500 varieties of lilacs right here in Highland Park. Now, Alwanger and Barry forever changed the face of Rochester when they gifted 20 acres to the city in 1888. This land became the first part of what is now Highland Park, location of the world-famous Lilac Festival, which happens each May right here in Rochester. Now, Rochester's moniker was later changed from the Flower City to the Flower City. <laughs> Not only are we a city of beauty on the outside, but we're a city with huge social conscience on the inside. That's right. Rochester took pride in social justice reforms from the beginning, starting with the anti-slavery movement. Famed abolitionist 
Frederick Douglass spent 25 of his most productive years right here in Rochester. Right. Douglass, an escaped slave, published the abolitionist newspaper, The North Star, right here, and assisted Harriet Tubman in the dangerous work of helping slaves escape via the Underground Railroad. Interestingly enough, Rochester was the last Underground Railroad stop for fugitive slaves before taking a boat for Canada across Lake Ontario. Rochester was also involved with women's rights, also from the very beginning. The Rochester Women's Rights Convention of 1848 was the second such convention in the nation. Who was the first, you ask? Seneca Falls. Seneca Falls Convention, which met two weeks earlier in Seneca Falls, New York, a town about 45 minutes away. Susan B. Anthony, a national leader of the women's suffrage movement, was born right here in Rochester, New York. She spent her whole life working tirelessly for education reform, abolition of slavery, labor reform, women's rights, and the right to vote for all Americans. Yeah. Now, she was arrested for voting in Rochester in 1872, I believe, for the uh, presidential election, well before it was legal for women to vote at all. Now, the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which guaranteed the right of women to vote in 1920, was popularly known as the Susan B. Anthony Amendment because of her decades of work toward its passage, which she did not live to see. Now, Anthony's home is now a National Historic Landmark as the National Susan B. Anthony Museum and House. And now I have a question for all of you out there. How many people know the name Hiram Sibley? Probably not that many, unless you're from Rochester, New York. But to know Hiram Sibley is to know Western Union, believe it or not. <laughs> yep, Hiram Sibley uh, was born in Massachusetts in 1807, and then he moved to Western New York in 1829. Now, at the age of 36, he was elected sheriff of Monroe County, which brought him to Rochester. It was after that that he heard about two scientists named Alfred Vail and Samuel Morse, whose work in something called the Telegraph piqued his interest so much that he gave up his office and went with Morse and Ezra Cornell to promote the Telegraph's growth and ask money from Congress to build a telegraph line from Washington to Baltimore. Now, Sibley served as the first president of Western Union Telegraph Company and in 1861 helped form the Pacific Telegraph Company. This was the final link between the east and west coast of the United States by telegraph, forever changing communications here in the United States. Pretty cool, huh? And finally, a name that needs no introduction, George Eastman. That's right. He is everywhere here in Rochester. <laughs> he was an American entrepreneur who founded the Eastman Kodak Company and helped to bring the photographic use of roll film to the world. He chose the name Kodak based on the way it sounded nice and strong. <laughs> he invented the first flexible film camera which made photography available to the masses. Now he was a lover of architecture, music, education, gardens, health and innovation. He was the benefactor of many, mm -hmm. many, many of the institutions here in Rochester today, including the Eastman School of Music, which I am a graduate of. That's right. We have a personal <laughs> connection to George. Now, thanks to George Eastman, Rochester is full of cultural attractions for visitors to enjoy. His name can be seen on so many buildings here in the city. From our founding father, whose vision and tenacity put Rochester on the map to the giants of the social conscience of the country. Rochester, New York has played such an important part in the innovation and growth of America and the world. We want to thank you for joining us for this episode of Our Hometown History. And remember, don't just watch our videos, hit that subscribe button to become a regular Cruising with Wheels family member of our YouTube channel. 
Click on that bell and you'll get automatic notifications when our videos go live. Also, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. <laughs> and remember to always travel safe and cruise often.